hello guys and welcome in this new video in the game engine series hope you guys are doing good in the previous video we spoke about the transform component but in this video today we're going to be talking about the mesh component how i manage to draw spheres and cube and things like that because i think that's um that's an important part of a game engine having mesh around it's really important yeah this is also attached to material but we're going to be talking about material in another video because material is also attached to the PBR, to the physical base rendering, lighting system, and all of that. So, all of these things actually, you know, come together somehow. And as you can see here, my mesh component right now, um, you know, in the UI here, I don't have that much information about the mesh component. But I'm going to be adding some more stuff. Basically, here you can choose the mesh you want to have. So, you can see I can change the mesh of this which one the sphere the blue sphere here i can select like a cube and you see it's going to be a cube i can select a sphere for example so i can basically change this uh, the, the, the mesh of that component so the mesh renderer is how i call it actually has um, a mesh data which i simply call mesh so in this case uh, and this mesh is a class that I'm going to be getting to in just a moment. So here you can see I have my default constructor. This is also a default constructor basically, but you know, just wanted to do that. And here you can see it basically takes the name of the mesh we want to create and it's going to get that mesh from the resource. As you can see here, I'm going to be talking about the resource out in just, in just a moment. So it's simply going to go and get this in the resource. So this is the mesh renderer. Now let's see the mesh class itself where everything is actually implemented. Now one thing I want to say up front is this is currently based on the on the tutorial of Learn OpenGL. So um, I just you know kind of get my inspiration from them, and I I'm pretty sure if you're learning OpenGL or if you're watching this, then you basically know about that. All the source code of this project are on my Patreon page, and if you guys are interested in that. You guys can go out and subscribe to my patreon page and get access to the source code so just wanted to say that so you can see we have some constructor here for our mesh and uh, i have one here which only takes vertices the idea is sometime um, when you're creating a mesh manually in your code like i'm doing right now i'm not loading those meshes from files so sometimes you just want to pass the vertices and call the draw uh, the draw arrays because normally drawing meshes is always better with indices but since i'm actually working right now on the project i have this constructor because i'm i'm able to actually create my cube inside of the code instead of having to load it from a model so that's why i have this constructor but normally you have a mesh which comes with uh, vertices indices and also texture in this case here so as you can see we have the constructor and we have this function init veo which is simply going to create our mesh basically create the attribute for the shader because the shader needs to know all these things so here is the function and i am pretty sure you know all of this we basically have the position the normal vector and the texture coordinate of the mesh now there are still more stuff you can add to your mesh like the tangent and uh, you know all these things depending on what you want to do you can add those things and for me i mean right now i don't need those things that's why i'm actually going out with only the three of these so i'm simply creating my my veos and my vertex buffer and stuff binding them and you know attach my data which i have down here and so that's basically the mesh i think this is quite straightforward to render i need a shader that's why i pass the shader here as parameter and i'm gonna take that shader and bind it simply render stuff here and that's basically how i can draw uh, my mesh on the screen now how am i actually uh, rendering this how am i creating my meshes and stuff i need to go to the resource so that you guys can see how i create for example uh, the sphere and the cube so this is the one for the sphere right now to be able to create a sphere you know there are some mathematical formula that you need to you know put in place that i'm not a big, i'm not i'm not gonna be getting deep into because that's not the purpose of this um actually here i'm creating my sphere and you, as you can see we have the indices and the vertices 
and um, and it simply takes the X segment and the Y segment to actually create a sphere in 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 three D uh, in OpenGL. It's not so easy because it's not something you just you just have like that. You need to make some calculation and I also copy and paste this in the code. This is basically how you can create the vertices, position, normal, and, and texture coordinate of a sphere. Basically, that's what we're doing here. And here, I'm basically creating the indices for that because I want to use the draw, uh, the draw elements to draw the, the, the sphere. I'm not using the draw arrays, but the draw element. That's why I'm creating the indices. Yeah. And down here, I can simply create a mesh you know a shared pointer of mesh passing passing my vertex data passing also my indices we don't have texture and stuff here so there's no need of creating anything with texture here and i, I i'm doing the same thing with the, the cube as you can see here i have my vertex data cube vertices as you can see i have um, this here which is the position this is the normal and this is the coordinate so I created my co my uh, my structure of vertex, which I'm using right here. Let me show you that. As, and as you can see, it simply has position, normal, texture coordinate, tangent, bitangent. But I'm not using this as I said right now. I just have two of these guys here right now. So that's why I can simply go here and create this array with all the vertices I need for a cube. And basically. I'm actually going to be doing that inside of a file and load that from a file but since I'm not I'm just trying right now to make things work so I'm not worrying too much about that and I can go out and create this cube the skybox also is basically just a cube that's why I have this here but it only has positions I don't have uh, things like normals and texture coordinate so that's basically how I'm creating my mesh component and I can basically go out and attach that to my entity. Now, how am I rendering? I have a mesh renderer system since we're using entity component system that we've created. So I have my mesh renderer system here. And as you can see up here, this system is going to be targeting all entities that has a mesh renderer and a transform component. So if you have a transform component and a mesh renderer, then this system will target you and update you basically and here I'm just loading some shaders I have a mesh shader I have an outline shader because I, I was testing some things with this outline we're gonna be talking about shader later and uh, I can basically go out and get the, the mesh renderer and the transform now to be able to actually draw a mesh you need to have a material but if an entity has a mesh but does not have a material I need to be able to render that object anyway that's why I have this default material down here. That's basically what I'm doing here. I'm checking if this entity has a material. If it has a material, then I'm going to be getting that material. If it doesn't, then I'm going to be using the default material. So that's why I didn't want to force this system to only take those entity with a material because a mesh is already something we can render and using the default material actually makes, makes it easy. So that's why I check here and simply go and as you can see I can send the information about the material to the shader we have the ambient occlusion we have the albedo metallic roughness we're gonna be talking about that later and so down here I'm just doing this because as I said I'm creating my meshes in the code that's why for the cube for example I have to call draw arrays because I'm only using vertices I'm not using indices so that's why I have this small test here but I'm gonna be changing that to only call draw and everything's gonna be fine so if my mesh right now is a sphere I want to call render I want to call draw and if if it's a cube right now I'm just want to call draw arrays and this is basically how I can create attach a mesh to an entity and draw it on the screen now uh, how to attach a mesh to an entity is something we already talked about since we 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 created our entity component system together I simply have an add component just like this get component I also have an add component which will basically attach this to an entity so that's basically it for this video I hope you guys learned something from it it um, my purpose is to inspire you and also to get feedback from you because the way I'm doing things might not be the perfect way might not be the best 
as I said, I'm not an ex I'm not an expert in this area. I'm just you know finding my way and you know trying to do things. So if you guys have any comment, any suggestion, anything that could help, make sure you write down below. And also, uh, it really means a lot to me when you subscribe to Medico Channel. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't, so you won't miss any of my up upcoming videos. I'm gonna be up uploading a video every day this week and trying to explain things that you guys can actually uh, learn.